The MotoGP beasts are ready. And away we go in MotoGP. Not a brilliant start from Jack Miller initially as the lights went out and Quattararo has bolted down to lead. How vital could that be? Jack Miller, exactly. It looks like Miguel Oliveira got away exceptionally to third. That was a great move from Oliveira. Very brave indeed to go up into second place. Polis Bargaro's taking an interesting inside line. We're losing places already. Zarco oh, is in wide. He's charging through the pack. He's up into fourth spot. That's excellent from going through on 10. Likewise, Binder. That's for see. Likewise, his teammate lost yeah. uh, quite a few places. The Italians have had a shocker, Steve. Rossi's gone backwards. Bagnaia, too. And on the exit there, onto the start straight. A bit of a wobble from Miller, and that allows the slipstream effect to come into play here for number 88. On. Stunning first lap, though. All qualifying yesterday. Our rider behind Joan Zarco. What? Yeah, and Quattararo. We'll hear that factory Suzuki behind him. Malaysia Spargo's had an excellent first lap and a half. Very close to each other in the hunt for seven. Yeah, Binder just beautiful, fast right handers that bring you on to the one kilometre start finish straight. Oliveira on the KTM from Mid. Oliveira is the fastest rider on circuit on his Aprilia RSGP in fourth place as we head down towards turn one then. It's KTM to cap a 40.535 from the Italian. That was a deep, but he manages to pull it back in. Great start then for Miguel Oliveira. I think Quattararo has lost a position to Zarco as well, Steve. Yeah, he, he has. No drive whatsoever up the hill. And he got rail run over, so they can't yep. for all three laps. But he's got brilliant rhythm. Definitely got the pace yep. to break away. Crucially on that last lap as well, Steve. Quattararo had enough of a buffer he got. This has been for Mark Marquez as well. He's closing in on this group. Go. It is Miguel Oliveira. And Aprilli will never. Oliveira, another couple of tenths that overtake to second place, but has now dropped behind. With clear track ahead of him, you know, he's not going to be. Desperately trying to find a way through on Juan Mir. There's the lead from the helicopter of Miguel Oliveira. Thought Mark Marquez was going to fire up the inside. Of Something happened to Rosarco oh, then. Oh, second, but the Australian must have run into some drama there because Juan Mir. Turn nine, Nicola Cabone went down. The Aprilia there of Alicia Spargaro moves up. And he cut into that one point. Probably try and just get into those 139s. And P at his finest though, folks. Oliveira, it is that leads the gap already down by one tenth through sector three. We'll have a look. Three tenths out of Quattararo in sectors one and two, and then Quattararo <laughs> brings a little bit of time back in sector three. Who it was that has just moved up into second place, so he'll know Banyaya in the top ten. A bit more with Eli. I mean, he's about half a second slow on that last lap than this man, Oliveira. Nakagami has been issued with a long lap penalty. and a lot of light he's got to take just wonder whether he could see Zarco just starting to really cut into some good rhythm Zarco the Frenchman uh, getting struggling to maintain the pace of Espargaro and Vinales for Miguel Oliveira's con life the balance as we've talked about numerous times this weekend between performance and endurance that was all the three fast rights to finish the lap as well really do punish both front and rear tyre he did not put a foot wrong in Mugello when he finished second to Fabio Quattararo. He was just in a world of his own. Can he? The tyres is... Oliveira's got the hard front tyre on there. You know how Quattararo's been so... Quattararo's so, so good on corner entry and turning. He's able to flick that one aside this year, the KTM. In fact, of course, noteworthy performance last weekend from Brad Binder. He equalled the all-time top speed record. Chances for Takanakagami and another disappointing weekend for the Japanese rider. So then at the fire conservation mode for Mir. Just saw their top of your top. Who it's the top has three. It's Alicia Spargaro. The yeah. pop then. It's already taken Mark Marquez out of the race. So now it takes Alicia Spargaro down. No home comforts for the Espargaro. It's quick as the leaders. Can he now close that down? It's got a lot. Fabio Quattararo biding his time on Miguel Oliveira and you would think Matt that he or he, he had the better edge grip than Oliveira he was able to run the tight the line and then there was just enough of a gap there to fire up the inside she win her of course when Fabio Quattararo's had daylight in front of him nobody's back wheel to stare at he's been lethal edge in top speed he's now going to try and get as close to the tail unit in a moment but let's just see how this one goes already Quattararo it's able to get a couple of tenths over Miguel Handel's pressure. You know, he just, you know, I don't want to jinx him, but he just puts up with it so well. He's the only man in this front group, all the way back to Brad Binder, his teammate, that is running the hard front, as you pointed it, ran it 
They didn't have enough edge grip. They couldn't do the lap times, but the KTM boys are. Maybe it'll work to do, but as we said, things can change quickly. Now, Oliveira is a little bit closer on this circuit than he was previously to Quattro. Can he get up the inside in the braking zone on Quattro? He certainly can, and with that extra straight line stability of that hard front. Eastern Fabio Quattro was expecting. Yeah, it's just fair to say, and now he's got that corner speed ramped up. Fabio Quattro close enough this time around to lunge up the inside of Oliveira down the hill. Zarco's through on What a win this would be for Miguel Oliveira where he able to pull it off. Joy, enormous feather in his cap, wouldn't it be? But he's managed to just get himself a couple of tenths advantage as they make their way down onto the start finish with Miguel Oliveira. He's super intelligent, super smart. And he didn't have to do so much hard work. He's launching an attack there on me. And and there's nothing you can do about the side line there deliberately to try and make life a bit more difficult for Jaron Zarco, but there was no stopping the Bologna bullet powering. He's back with this group now. Not the race we expected to unfold this race, uh, Matt, with eight laps to go, because what is it going to be in a couple of laps' time where really we have no Oliveira or Quattro. Oliveira, who still leads, we're just about to chalk off lap number 17 here. Yep. Ben, we were just it's an unwanted hat trick a third crash of the weekend starting to really show their class with seven laps to go they've got a nice gap back to Zarco Miller Mir and Vinales podium it does look like it's a battle between these two men Oliveira versus Quattararo felt like that was going to start finish straight then with six laps to go it looks like it's a race for the win but the Suzuki man in the breaking zone not find a way through on the factory Ducati 40.9 from Oliveira on that last lap. That's his slow. Five lap 19. Zarco took a couple of tenths out of them in that first sector. The twice a winner himself already, of course, but not in the full factory colours. The last time they did that, of course, last year, race in 2018. And he'd love to exact a bit of revenge on that defeat. He took his first ever Grand Eight. Quattarara himself dips back into the 41s, gap back up to four tenths of a second. It really has transformed the fortunes of the Portuguese rider who up until Italy hadn't even got in the top 10. Suzuki as wide as an 18-wheeler at the moment, isn't he? Very nervous looking. Pit Byra with five laps remaining. This is from Miguel Oliveira. They've been busy in the transfer market, busy in the uh, negotiations behind the scenes at the KTM, signing Red Long before they re-upping with, with Oliveira at the moment. A few days, perhaps. <laughs> yeah, tonight maybe. Desperate to get past Pekka Banyaya because he's got rhythm to potentially close up on Mir and Vinales. Into this Grand Prix now, and it's the crucial phase of it where the tyres are going to be deteriorating at a fairly rapid rate in terms of speed and consistency. And at the moment, he's still not letting Fabio Quattararo get close enough to show him that. Quattararo struggling to stay with him at the moment. Quattararo not able to sort of get into that same rhythm he had yesterday in free Biggest advantage. He's yeah, he's had. in trouble. Zarco's right on top of him now. Can you believe this? Fabio Quattararo may well lose the post. This is Chlorikant, and he will make like a 141.5 for Fabio Quattararo. Doesn't look like he's winning the Catalan Grand Prix. By corner, the front just tucked from right underneath him. I think the right has got some sort of issues. He's taking his chest protection. Perez. I've never seen anything like no. that. Like whether it's the combination of the leathers and the f a black flag here, I, I don't know. I've not I've got this in the bag just yet. We're getting closer to the final lap of the race, but look who's creeping closer and closer. We remind you, ladies and gentlemen, into the last couple of corners. We're going to start the last lap. There's half a second between Miguel. There'll be some kind of penalty. Will it be black flag? Will there be a DQ? He'll have seen on his pit board that Zarco's closing Miguel Oliveira. Yeah, and how ironic this would be if Sarko beats the factory. Left KTM halfway through a two-year contract. We thought his MotoGP career was over, and he stands on the biggest moment. Can he get close enough, crucially, to make a move into Turn 10? Because it would be very difficult to pull off anything anywhere else. Here in the back of your picture, can he find Miguel Oliveira? Normally in these situations, mentally, the podium has gone. The checkered flag is out, and it looks like this one is Miguel Oliveira wins on the factory KTM here in Barcelona ahead of Joan Zarco and Quattararo but he will not finish takes the chequered flag third bare chested as well but he has made again 11 MotoGP podiums his eighth runner-up spot but Miguel Oliveira absolute Quattararo's leathers his front tyre we saw was graining badly as well Danny Pedrosa so much credit